Hi friends and welcome back. We are going to do another spread in um, our grid journal. I've already gone ahead and drawn my grids that I'm going to use today. I believe that this size is about a business card size. Um, I think maybe that's two, two and a half by three and a half, something like that. Um, you can take any object that you want and trace around that. Um, to create your grids and actually for mine since I've been doing so many grid journal spreads I actually created some templates out of a thin piece of cardboard and cut my um, box out of that that way I can actually trace on the inside and it's a little bit easier for me to trace so if you don't like tracing around an object you can go ahead and cut that out of um, something to become a stencil basically so I started with my Stabilo All Pencil and I want to get some pigment down in those squares and just get a little bit messy to get started. Otherwise, it's a bit intimidating just looking at all those blank squares. So I had my Stabilo All Pencil dry and squiggled in um, on that grid. Now I'm taking my brush and dipping it just right in the water and going over some of those um, squiggle lines that I had made. Now I am also going over areas that um, I did not mark with that Stabilo All Pencil and that just moves the pigment around in the area almost like it's a paint or any other thing that you could put color down with. I'm going to start by layering um, some washi tape in these squares. I'm trying to be random with my placement. I don't want to put them in the same spot in every single box. I want to vary things up. So it's easy as we go to kind of get into that repetition of, you know, we always put it in the, the, the right side or whatever that may be. Um, but it is nice if we can try to switch that up just a little bit. Coming in with a different washi tape now, just layering up, um, building up those base layers. Yes, some of this will end up being covered later on when we add different elements, but I think what really causes interest in our pages and in our spreads and in these individual little blocks here is when there are lots of layers. So even though we won't see everything that we're doing right now, later on just little bits and pieces will poke through so as you're working try not to think too much about the end result here as we go along um, it's hard to get out of that mindset but the more that we practice doing that i think the better it can be so i'm just scribbling in these blocks now again just messing them up um, i don't want anything to be too precious or too perfect but um, scribbling in those blocks allows my mind just to let go a little bit and I don't do this often enough, but if you're having problems with your um, scribbles and that maybe that sounds funny that you may be having problems with those because it's such a loose movement, I think because it is a loose movement, it can be hard to do sometimes. Our, our mind wants to take control and tell us where the squiggles need to go. But um, I suggest either going with your non-dominant hand and just letting the pencil move in your fingers or close your eyes and squiggle a little bit. Um, it may be harder on these this grid journal spread just because you want to kind of stay within those designated blocks. But if you're working in a regular art journal or working on a piece of paper, if you close your eyes and hold your pencil loosely and do some scribbles, um, you can get more of that organic feeling. With masking tape, I am continuing to layer up. You can hardly, I mean, you can see the masking tape, but you can't see it completely. What I'm just doing here is trying to create that illusion of um, the front and the back and the different layers that we develop. Now I'm going to glue on um, some collage bits, and this is just from... Um, this is deli paper and I pre-printed um, different patterns on it. That way, I, when I come to my art journal, I have them to use and I don't have to stop and make those papers. 
when I'm making papers, I like to make a bunch at once. That way, when I go into my art journals, they're already pre-made. I find it more difficult if I have to stop and make something specifically for a journal spread versus if it's already pre-made. I'm trying to change up the placement in each square, not necessarily putting it in the same spot. And each element that we add to the page does not necessarily need to go in every single box. Um, we can change that up. Um, maybe it only goes in half of them or um, we just, it's good to switch it up because then it keeps the eye moving and guessing around. I'm using my Posca paint marker now. It's one of the um, more medium width ones, I would say, and adding in a few bold elements. Normally, a Posca marker is something that I add in towards the end, but I'm trying to change up a little bit what order I do things in. If I'm always doing things in the same order, things can feel a bit stagnant or um, a predictable, but... When I always put it on at the end, you're always seeing, you know, the whole part of what you put on the page. Like if you draw a circle, you always see the full circle versus if I put it on at this stage, you'll end up seeing that part of this then will be covered. And then it plays into the viewer's eye of going in the foreground and in the background. So by changing up the order that we do things, it may not necessarily be cha always changing up what supplies we are using, but the order that we do things or maybe the way that we apply that material. So I am putting on some heavy body gray paint now and instead of using a paintbrush, I am just going in there with my finger and it is mixing some with the pigment that was already down on the page and I'm okay with that. Um, those squares may not have been completely dry. So I'm okay with how things mix and um, kind of that element of surprise that we don't know how things will mix before we go into doing them. It's nice to know how different elements and different um, products and different um, supplies will interact with each other. And this is this play here in this journal is a perfect way to start knowing how your supplies play with one another, how they react um, to something. Do you want it to be completely dry before you add the next layer? Um, all of those good things. Um, it's good to know how they interact, but don't be scared if you don't know how they interact yet. The only way to start learning that is to jump in, start playing, start um, picking different materials. And if you're having trouble picking what supply to use next, maybe at the beginning of your art journal spread, just have them laid out in front of you and then close your eyes and pick one. Um, just go go with whatever you grab. Another great way to, to um, not get stuck is if you use a prompt deck. Um, I know several um, different creators out there have them where you can uh, download them um, as a digital download and print them off. That way you can put them in a bowl or in a pouch or something and then randomly pick one and then you do whatever prompt that says. It could be um, now we use an oil pastel or now you... Um, use the color pink or whatever it may be. Um, though that can really help you to loosen up and to to know what to do next. So I added in that heavy body paint. Now I am coming in with an oil pastel and um, I really like this brand. It is definitely a bit more expensive. I only have um, probably six different ones of it. Um, Selenier, I think is how you pronounce it. I'm not quite sure. Uh, it is very rich, very creamy, and the color is um, extremely rich. I, I do like them, but I, most of my oil pastels that I have are just a, um, a, a more inexpensive brand, um, kind of like a school grade brand. So it's, it's not a, always about having the best quality art supplies or the, the most expensive or anything, but I think it's just exploring and using and finding different ways to use what we do have on hand. And if you are interested in those more expensive supplies, maybe pick ones that you can buy just the individual colors instead of an entire set. 
So with these oil pastels, I just chose, you know, my six favorites or um, whatever it may be. And I know it's hard to narrow down what colors you want to pick, but maybe just think of ones that you use the most often. I am rubbing in this oil pastel um, just to make it blend more with the background, blend more with the layers that I've already put down. I'm not being too particular or too fussy about um, what's going on here. And I'm taking pigment that's already down on the page and moving it into the other squares as well. I want to add more of this um, pink magenta color to the page. Um, I, I think what I did is really nice. I just think that there needs to be more. So I'm picking a pink color that goes with um, that pastel that I already did. It would be fun to do a complementary color or um, something contrasting. I usually tend to work a bit more monochromatically. Um, and so this paint color that I picked is actually matches really well, but I think it actually matches too well. It's right in the same tone. And if I were to add it to the to um, the page just how it is, I don't think it would be enough different than the pastel. So what I did is I added a bit of white to it just to make that tone um, a bit lighter and it will be enough different than, than the oil pastel that we already put on the page. I like how this color keeps things um, still light within the boxes, but it still adds that interest that I'm looking for. So I'm continuing to layer up, um, and yes, I will be covering some of what I did before, but I think that's nice. So we'll be able to, to have that different interest of the layers of what is going on. I think it's important to practice this of starting to feel a bit more comfortable with covering up what we've already done. So it can be a bit of a scary process to go through the work and um, to create something just to basically cover it up. But I think if we start practicing that and become a bit more fearless, um, at least for me personally, I love the end result better because things have so much more going on. There's more intrigue. There's more to look at. And it's more of a feeling of like, whoa, how, how did they do that? What exactly is going on? Because the eye cannot pick apart all those layers as easily when they blend and flow into each other um, versus if things are just very one dimensional and we only work one layer on them. If we can kind of blend and keep working at it, um, I think things just become a bit more interesting. As I was saying before, with that Posca marker, we can now see how it is still bold, but it's being covered up a little bit in different ways so that it now appears on the spread in different ways than I normally uh, work with it. So a lot of times it would be, I would wait till the end, like I said, to put in that Posca marker and you would see it completely. But I really... I really appreciate how it's kind of going into the background, but still being a part of the foreground. I'm trying to be loose with how I um, use my paintbrush, how I apply this paint, um, trying to make sure I'm not doing it the exact same way in each spread. And maybe that's holding it differently, um, making different marks, the amount of paint on the paintbrush can make a big difference too. I notice that when I do use a paintbrush, sometimes I am too precious with it. And um, sometimes that's maybe if it's a more expensive paintbrush or whatnot. But if you're finding yourself being too precious with your paintbrush and you're not getting any results that you like, maybe try a less expensive paintbrush that's um, uh, you don't care about quite as much and try different techniques with it. Maybe be a bit more rough or um, apply the paint in a different way that you normally wouldn't. Next up, I want to add some more white back into this. Um, as I was working on it, I wasn't sure how much I liked that pink color. In the end, I really do like how it all dried and how it worked out. But at this point in my head, I'm thinking, okay, it's a bit too much of that light pink color. 
um, let's try to do something, continue to add those layers and see what we can do so that it's not so much in the foreground. Um, so I'm bringing in that white gesso and white gesso is always um, just a problem solver, I think. So if you ever have an area that you're not liking so much or that you think needs to be revised a bit, I suggest adding in that white gesso. Black gesso can work really well as well. It is very opaque. It dries quickly, but it is definitely overpowering, um, which can be good in a lot of ways. I love that contrast, but in this spread, it would have just totally taken over. So that white gesso keeps things light, keeps things fresh and bright, um, but takes away some of that overpowering pink that I had before. As I'm making marks, I'm really not sure exactly what I'm doing. I'm just trying to be loose and let it speak to me as the paintbrush touches the page. I really don't have a plan with what I'm doing, but I do know that I don't want to make too many um, necessarily small marks all the time just because it can look quite busy in the end. And so I'm trying to vary the size and the shapes and all the different marks that I am making. Another great thing to do as you're going along is to change the pressure that you apply when you use your paintbrush. So um, right there, I was pushing pretty hard. Um, in other spots, I don't put a lot of paint on my brush and kind of um, more lightly go with the brush. That's so just more of a brush stroke effect. Um, just continuing to play around with um, the different techniques. Before I add any other marks or do anything else, I just want to hit that gesso with the heat gun so that when I add marks on top, it um, does not smear all the way. Now using my bold black pen um, to add some marks back into the page, I am making some of those squares uh, um, outlines bold again. Um, I had used different paints and they covered those lines, which I'm okay with. Um, I just wanted the look of um, a little bit more bold outlines. You can tell some of my page is still wet with the different art supplies that I had used, so the pen does not work um, completely over those areas, but I'm okay with the inconsistencies. I I think it actually adds a bit more intrigue that it's not all perfect. Now inside of the squares, I'm going to be adding some different art marks. I think art marks can be, for me at least, one of the most difficult steps. I think they're so needed for your page, for it all to come together, but I have the tendency that I'm always doing the same marks or um, that it ends up looking too busy in the end. Like I don't know when to stop. So when I make the art marks, these little um, repetitive marks here at the end, I'm constantly trying to to make a couple marks, look back, evaluate the page, and to keep going. Um, otherwise, it's easy for it to get away from me, and then they all, they end up looking too busy in the end. So that's a skill that I am um, constantly working on when I am art journaling, um, just so that I can keep paying attention to that. I want to add some of that that loose grunge organic scribbles back into it um, going over top of what I've done and that kind of brings the background scribbles that I did earlier back into the foreground a little bit and kind of makes all the layers come together.
I'm looking at my page from a different angle, seeing if there's anything that pops out to me, um, anything more that I can do to really make this page come together. So I'm thinking that it's missing a bit of grunge. Um, I already added that Stabilo all earlier. I could have done that again, um, but I wanted it to be a little bit uh, bolder. So I am bringing in the black gesso like I talked about earlier. Um, it's quite opaque and it dries really quick. So if I used a paintbrush, I think it would um, look a bit the same that I've already done, the same technique. So I am trying something different and... I'm using a uh, makeup spoolie mascara brush here to put that paint on, paint on in a very organic way. It's very unpredictable with how it goes on. I'm kind of just holding it loosely, rolling it back and forth. Um, there you could see that I am just kind of scrubbing it in. There is not a lot of paint on that brush. Um, that lid that I am dipping into is pretty dry at the moment. Um, and so I'm being careful not to get like huge globs of that really bold contrasting color on there. And lastly, I'm going to use that heat gun just to give everything a good, um, dry. And I am all done with this spread. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Also, let me know if there's any special colors that you want me to try on a grid journal spread next. Thank you so much for joining me and for watching, and I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day. See you next time.